Well, hello, and welcome back to the help desk. They warned me you were coming this time, so you'll find that I'm attentively watching the operator console here. And uh, they said you guys were interested in seeing uh, the Opalis integration server and how the uh, the new install has sort of changed the way we're working here at the help desk. And uh, I guess I'm uh, here to help you see that. So you remember last time we were working through uh, a web server unresponsive on our Southfield server, that pesky server 22. And uh, I'm here to show you what that looks like uh, in the current version. So. Uh, See the uh, the alerts are still coming in here to uh, operations manager, but uh, now instead of uh, having to go and uh, bother Charles and uh, RDP to those sessions and delete probably just the lock files, hopefully, um, now I don't need to do any of that. I uh, I log into the uh, operator console here, the Opalis operator console, and you see I can. Uh, view uh, a number of different uh, workflows that are out there. You can see a couple of different groups have been building these in the last week. Um, I can't see into them. They've locked me out of these for some reason. I guess they don't trust me. Uh, but I can see into the help desk group here and um, see the work that we've been doing. And, uh, and you guys are interested in the web server reset, so let me drop right in there. And um, and here is what the uh, the uh, workflow looks like. And you can see that, uh, that Charles had some input in here in, in converting uh, the work that was done before and uh, uh, moving that script over into this process, and uh, it's pretty much the same thing we've been doing all along. You uh, now we uh, just pass the uh, IP address in first, and uh, it'll go ahead and create our our incidents for us in the in the help desk, which is really nice. Uh, it goes through the check, uh, deletes the lock files, and just the lock files, uh, repairs the web service, and so on. Um, so this is all based on uh, Charles's logic, except this part here, the false positive, uh, in the hopes that it's actually up and running. That was my uh, input. Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, what we see here is the uh, the logs in the past ones that have run. But uh, if I wanted to run this right now and uh, resolve the current issue that's out there, I just need to type in the address 168.0.pesky.old22 and fire that off. And what we should see down here is that there's a request that's been uh, actually looks like it's already fired off. So before my refresh got there, the uh, the request was consumed by the uh, the action servers, and uh, and there it is. If we click in there. You can see that it's already, gosh, it's already into the repair stage. So it's certainly created that incident faster than I ever could. Um, it verified that the web page was down, and uh, next refresh, my gosh, it's completely done. Wow, that's impressive. Um, I certainly couldn't have done it that quick. Uh, so at this stage, I go back to operations manager and uh, and close out that alert. But uh, Charles was telling me that that's actually the next thing that they're going to do. They just wanted to make sure this was working first, and they're actually going to tie this directly into operations manager. It's going to take the alert straight out of there, pull out the bits that it needs, and run through this. And uh, ultimately, it's going to go back and close the um, close the alert out right away. So I won't even have to do that little bit right there. So uh, I guess uh, you know I can uh, see about automating other stuff here in the future. I wonder if we can do something about that empty refrigerator.